The movie, In Between, opens up with a cheery birthday atmosphere with Maurice Sam who played the character, Elliot, being the celebrant. His mom, dad, and Celia, his girlfriend, celebrates him as he turns a year older. Celia soon excused herself as she had to return to work. Elliot saw Celia out and thanked her for taking care of him and his family. Celia was in love and was happy doing anything that would make Elliot comfortable and happy. She even offered to change the new apartment he got for them if they didn't like it. The next day, Elliot met up with his other girlfriend, Chioma. He apologized for not spending his birthday with her. He blamed his absence on a stressful day at work. He soon consoled Chioma with gifts and she appeared to have bought his lies. At night, before Celia got back from work, Elliot showed up at her apartment, wearing his romantic boyfriend cap. He showered her with praises and compliments. Well, we all know where that led. The following morning at breakfast, Celia offered Elliot a job as the project manager to her father's company, placing him on a start-off salary of 200,000 naira. Elliot was happy and mentioned how she spoils him too much and wouldn't have been able to do anything without her constant care and help. As always, Celia was glad to help since she loves him deeply. Back at home, Elliot's father had a meeting with him and his mother. He tried talking Elliot out of his two-timing game, advising him to be a man and stick to one woman to avoid causing both ladies' heartbreaks in the long run. But Elliot's mother wasn't pleased at all with what her husband said. Elliot however claimed to love both ladies. When his father left, Elliot told his mother he loved Chioma enough to marry her. But then again, he also professed his love for Celia. His mother who preferred Chioma for some reason, told him to consider Celia as their helper who came at the right time when they needed her. She made him understand that he had known Chioma for 10 years and Celia only came along 4 years ago. She further praised Elliot for his two-timing effort and said she was proud of him. At the office, Elliot resumed work and as instructed by Celia, Tony, her personal assistant put him through all he needed to start his job. Elliot got a call from Chioma. He talked about how he was liking his new job. Chioma claimed to be happy for him, and soon brought up a family emergency that required money. Elliot emptied his account, giving above half of the amount she requested. He promised to do anything for her just to make her know how much he loved her. On dropping the call, Celia walked in to ask him what he wanted for lunch. It was month end and as usual, Celia asked her driver to deliver a trunk full of groceries and all kinds of foodstuffs to Elliot's house. His mother is overjoyed by this kind gesture, but we all know the kind of person she is at this point. Elliot's father was pissed that his son and wife kept manipulating Celia and her good hearts. While Elliot's father asked his wife to advise her son, Elliot, to stop taking gifts from Celia if he didn't have the intention of marrying her, Elliot's mother however rejected his opinion, saying she never forced Celia to send gifts and that she would never allow her son, Elliot, to marry an old woman, when a soft, succulent and innocent Chioma is available for him. Still the same day, Elliot got back from work and probably met the commotion at home. He then sat his parents down and asked them why they constantly fight. His father advised him to break ties with one of his girlfriends and ask her for forgiveness. He made him see reasons why he shouldn't play with Celia's heart citing how she saw him through school, rented an apartment for them, put them on a monthly salary, and even sends them monthly food packages. Elliot's father suggested he and his wife go back to the village where they were before Celia brought them to Lagos, if eventually Elliot did the right thing by telling her the truth. Elliot's mother on the other hand didn't like this idea and was of the opinion that Celia was their helper and was just doing everything for them out of her own free will. Elliot once again was influenced by his mother. He blankly stated that he wouldn't marry Celia just because of the things she had done for him. He promised to cut all ties with her when the time was right. Next stop, at Celia's apartment. Tony brought her home, and ultimately offered to make her dinner, to which she enjoyed. They soon bade their good nights and happy weekends. Meanwhile, Elliot had gone over to Chioma's. The duo were having a fun weekend. They shared romantic moments together, eating from each other's hands, 
having pillow fights and sharing kisses. All these was happening while Celia called Elliot's phone many times, even getting worried when he didn't pick up or return her calls. She made her way to his house but Elliot's evil mother wouldn't let her in. Weekend has ended. Elliot's finally called Celia over and gave her a ridiculous reason as to why he wasn't available all weekend. He put on his acting skills, pretending to have been sick and was at the hospital all weekend. He further told Celia he didn't want to bother her. A good-hearted Celia apologized over his health and once again took care of him. The next day, at the office, when Tony observed Elliot's absence, Celia told him Elliot called in sick, and she offered to do his work. Tony didn't like this idea at all because according to him, Elliot had been slacking and had a lot of work to do. Meanwhile, Elliot was having breakfast at home when Celia called to check up on him. On dropping the call, his father got pissed at his manipulative behavior. His mother, however, praised him for being such a fantastic actor. Back at the office, Celia and Tony took up Elliot's work. It became quite overwhelming for Celia. Back at Elliot's house, his dad packed his bags and leaves for the village. He said he didn't want to be a part of the evil Elliot and his mother are committing against Celia. At bedtime, Elliot made a decision to wrap up his mess quickly before things get out of hand. A few days later, at the office, Elliot went about his work, putting on a sad face. Celia asked what the problem was and he mentioned needing money to start up a business idea. They decided to talk about it after work. Later that day, Elliot requested for 5 million naira to start up the business he mentioned earlier and, Celia as always, gave it to him. A deceitful Elliot professed his love to her and mentioned how she was the best girlfriend in the whole wide world. Some other time, Elliot visited Chioma. They had plans to start up a hair business together with the 5 million naira he collected from Celia. Chioma spearheaded the business venture. She proceeded to thank Elliot for everything he had done for her, putting her through school and taking care of her and her family. The next day, Celia calls Tony and Elliot into her office and told them the company was going through some shortcomings. She asked Elliot what could be done to alleviate the situation since the problem was from his department. Elliot however had nothing to say. Celia excused them both and asked Elliot for a report regarding that later. Tony stayed behind and made his concerns about Elliot known. He mentioned how Elliot didn't seem to understand his work and how he had a lot of work pending. Celia was defensive and told Tony to back off. Tony asked if she was dating him because he wouldn't understand why she kept on defending Elliot. He further mentioned how he had been her father's personal assistant for years and knows that he would never hire anyone who is not competent for the job, citing how Elliot's incompetence to work is affecting the company. Celia seemed to have had enough of Tony bickering, she simply ordered him to leave her office. After work, Celia had a conversation with Elliot about why he is slacking at work despite the fact that she had given him courses to read in order for him to understand his work position. She mentioned how workers are talking at the office. Elliot who was looking for a way to end things with Celia, took offense and got defensive. He then exited the car. Without remorse, Elliot failed to show up at work in subsequent days. He constantly declined Celia's call and spent more time with Chioma. At the office, Celia and Tony had to do Elliot's work again, with Tony assisting as much as he can. Celia often thanked Tony for his hard work and for taking out time to do something out of his job description. Tony was however happy to do anything for Celia. On their way out, he had a little inner man conversation on how he should shoot his shot and just ask Celia out. But then again, he wasn't bold enough. Instead of going home to rest after work, Celia made her way to Elliot's house, knocking non-stop, but nobody opened up for her. Meanwhile, Elliot and his mother could hear her incessant knocks from inside. Despite being mean to her and avoiding her calls, Elliot wondered why Celia was so persistent. His mother however told him not to give in because that was the only way to break free from her. She acknowledged the fact that he had gotten enough money from Celia already and had started a business with his true love, Chioma.
Celia, according to her, will move on. Elliot decided to tell his dad he had broken up with Celia. His father was not pleased that he collected 5 million naira from her and dumped her. His father made a similarity between how Celia trained him to school and how he is also training Chioma to school. He mentioned that Chioma might end up dumping him just like he did to Celia. Elliot however became defensive and told his father to stop wishing him bad luck. Back at Celia's house, she cried her eyes out after repeated call fails to Elliot. Her father called her phone but she wasn't able to talk properly without crying on the phone. The next day, unlike her, Celia didn't show up at work. Tony had a conversation with her dad and promised to check up on her after work. While Elliot and Chioma cuddled up and gave each other massages, Celia was at home repeatedly dialing Elliot's number and drowning herself in alcohol. Tony came and was baffled at Celia's drunken state. He had never seen her drink. He asked her why she hadn't been picking her father's call. A drunk Celia simply said she was fine. He then took care of her and sends her off to bed. That same night at Chioma's apartment. She informed Elliot she was pregnant and Elliot was overjoyed about becoming a father soon. Back at Celia home, it was morning and she was horrified to learn that Tony practically changed her into her pajamas before bedtime. Tony was apologetic, explaining why he did it, but Celia simply sent him away. Next stop, Elliot came in bouncing happily to inform his mother that he would soon be a dad. His mother was happy and couldn't wait to be the latest grandma in town. They then made plans to start the wedding preparations as soon as possible. Later that day, Celia came knocking persistently on Elliot's door, shouting that he needed to be a man to come tell her to her face that he wasn't interested in their relationship anymore. Elliot's mother decided to come out this time to tell her to back off. She ultimately broke the news of Elliot's second affair and how he was expecting a child with another woman. Elliot came out to take over the conversation. He apologized to Celia and told him the main reason he ghosted her. Having thanked her for all she did for him and his family, he left her outside to digest the heavy news. Celia was beyond shocked. A heartbroken Celia went back home to cry her eyes out and drown in more alcohol. She wouldn't show up to work too. A concerned Tony came again to check up on her and was sad about the condition he found her. He was pissed at Elliot for taking advantage of her. Some other time, Elliot leaves for Chioma's house. On getting there, Chioma was nowhere to be found, when he tried to place a call through to her, he heard a phone ringing beneath the pillow. He was met with a letter and Chioma's phone. The letter simply portrays apologies, thank yous, and an eventual breakup. Chioma had fled abroad with another man. She claimed the pregnancy doesn't belong to Elliot. For days, Elliot wouldn't eat. His mother tried to pacify him, advising him to take a cup of coffee since he didn't eat anything. He refused and when his mother persisted, he opted for if looks could kill approach to make his point clear. At the office, Celia was happy and back, and Tony was happier to have her back, even though it was just for a while. Celia planned on leaving town soon, and had given Tony her position as the company's general manager. She however praised him for being a good man and prayed that he finds a good woman someday. Tony was seeing the good woman in front of him but couldn't shoot his shot. Back at Elliot's house, Elliot was still suffering from heartache. He reminisced the beautiful moments he shared with Celia and how good she was to him. At the end of that week, Celia appreciated Tony's effort and entrusted her father's company into his hands. While saying her goodbyes. All of a sudden, Elliot's barged in, went on his knees and apologized to Celia for every pain he caused her. He mostly blamed his mother for his predicament. Celia forgave him and said it was okay since humans tend to make mistakes. Elliot for a second believed she had forgiven him truly, but was disappointed when she flipped at him. Sorry. Yeah, like I said, we, we all make mistakes. And you, Elliot, are the mistake I made. I'm sure I must have done something in my past life for God to send someone like you my way. And I say this with everything in me. Elliot, you will look for me in every other woman, but you will never find me in her. Babe. 
You will never find another woman like me. Never. And I won't be there to be your second option or your substitute. I won't be there. I'm honestly sorry. Please. And I chose to be petty. And I made some calls and made sure that you never ever find a job anywhere in this town. Okay, from the bottom, please. I'm leaving. Tony, yeah. make sure he leaves before I miss my flights. A couple of years later, Celia came back to help Tony shoot his shot. They lived happily ever after, and the movie ended. Moral lesson of the story, never take people's genuine love for granted. Drop your moral lesson in the comment. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.